Our next speaker is Michael Shackleton. Michael is a National Assembly Member of Parliament and is the JCI Swadi 2019 President. Michael is going to be talking about covering sustainable SDG number 17, which is Partnerships for the Goals. And his title, the title of his speech is Active Citizenry is not just your right, it is your duty. And I think all our discussions today about being active citizens, I think it's, it's um, a very important, passionate topic to cover. So let's welcome Michael. To me, Lang Barhecho. Moeni, Sangwanani, Kuyamira, good afternoon. I think you can all hear me from here. I am the president of an organization, uh, well, of a local organization, JCI Chuanin, which is an international organization of which Kofi Annan and Bill Clinton are alumni. Junior Chamber International comprises of young professionals aged 18 to 40 around the world. And when people are over the age of 40, they are eligible to become JCI senators. That's more a generalization as well, because if you are absolutely superb and you do wonderful things, you, you can become JCI senator before 40 as well. So earlier today, you would have heard from Senator Darian Ishiberi Molina, all the way from Colombia, that's a JCI senator. We have Lunga, who uh, he didn't actually mention. He's uh, the JCI national treasurer as well. But why I mention this is, and obviously Simpiwe Zuma from JCI Sanson, who won the award for being the best member of JCI in South Africa last year. So well done on that. And uh, Vino, the organizer of World Speech Day, is an ambassador of JCI. Chwane, as she's, yeah, well, um, it's, it's not polite to mention a woman's age. So <laughs> not saying it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's showing. <laughs> But essentially, why I've mentioned this is because my topic, active citizenry, is not just your right, it is your duty, is because the whole theme, really, of GHM International is that of, of active citizenry. And I think in the things that I do as well, and then being a member of Parliament, actually, actually only since September last year, I, I was a city councillor here in Pretoria since March 2014, and through Toastmasters as well, where me and Vino share the, the privilege, really, of, of being at the rank of something called Distinguished Toastmaster, which is where you've gone through all of the various speaking elements, through the leadership elements. And I think that enables us to lift people up. We live in, we live in a country where I actually mentioned recently in a speech in Parliament, the last, the last stat we really got of national poverty was in 2015. And that said that more than half of the population earned below 992 rand a month. And that's only become worse under increased VAT, excessive living costs, increases in petrol affects everybody, whether you have a car or not, whether you work in checkers, whether you're a teller, whether you are a member of parliament. Unless you're the president, you can have a nice blue light brigade, and I guess you don't have to pay yourself for that. But I, I strongly believe, which I, I, I think is very closely linked to what Niku said, that we do have a duty to help others in this country as far as possible. And what, what people do know that have met me before, before I joined Toastmasters in 2011, I used to stutter very, very bad in, in every conversation, especially very badly over the phone. And still now I can, I, I can tell you, which I think ties in with that everyone can find their own way to being an active citizen. So that I still do get scared sometimes, especially in one-on-one -on -one conversations. I watch what I say sometimes when, when there's maybe a word that's going to come up that I think I might stutter over, then I actually pause and I become uneasy and I try to shift the words. But it's, it's, I, was, I was reading a book recently by Brian Tracy called Maximum Achievement. I suppose some of you might have, might have heard of him. He's an international American motivational speaker and author. And he referenced the Scottish proverb that says, it's better to light a wee candle than to curse the darkness. And, and I think that that's beautiful because 
it tells us all that we have some sort of role to play. Probably not everyone in this room wants to be a politician. Probably not everyone wants to be CEO of a company. But I think that's what's beautiful about being individuals. And linking that to partnerships to the Millennium Development Goal. Really what that goal says is that internationally, but I think more so in, in, in Africa, in developing countries, we experience a situation where government doesn't really have all of the resources that it, that it needs to make their countries a, a thriving success. So we need to work in a partnership with non-governmental organizations, with the private sector. But we've also seen in, in, in this country how that's been abused. Businesses are invited to job summits, to business summits. Businesses like Wasasa, big business, where small to medium-sized businesses like SMEs, that maybe a business the guy in the township creates, or the guy next door creates, they aren't going to be invited. And we've even seen certain NGOs having so-called non-governmental you know, events and they're non-partisan, then you'll see them having leaders of certain parties and certain organizations essentially being the main people and pushing a very specific agenda. And so my, my message today really is, and I'm not sure if I'm preaching to the choir in fact, but that if one does get involved in, in, these, in these partnerships, trying to lift up society really, that the first goal always has to be, in Junior Chamber International, we have something called the JCI Creed, which we recite at the beginning of every meeting, every gathering. There's a whole bunch of things there, things like free market economics, things like justice. But what stands out for me there, it says, service to humanity is the best work of life. And that, to me, really is certainly what, what I'm about, and what I would, I would strive everyone else in this room to be about. That if you, let's say, with, with Niku's work, with approaching government, maybe, maybe you would approach government for money or lending or partnerships, that would be about lifting others up. With Junior Chamber International, now we are, we are entering into a partnership with the city of Chuan, where there's, there's actually no financial benefit to us, but we will go into communities, giving, giving people seminars, giving people training sessions, especially in township areas, to lift them up through the type of skills that, that we have. Voting is coming up now on the 8th of May. I'm, I'm not here to preach, obviously, about any political party as well. JCI as well is a, is a purely apolitical organization, which is beautiful. I mean, we, we have members across the political spectrum, and we can go and have meetings with governments, government departments, where we, we don't talk about politics. We don't say, I'm voting for this person, or I'm against your guy that gave this speech. Why did you say that? But it's really about working together. But I think in the sense of being an active citizen, I would encourage every single person here to go and vote on the 8th of May so that you have a stake, really, in what's happening in the country. If you, if you haven't seen it, there's, there's a beautiful video by Michelle Obama, and you can probably Google it, go onto YouTube, where she, she goes on for about 20 minutes or so about the reasons to vote. And essentially, we know in, in this country, I mean, Parliament makes national laws. There are so many things that we do that it's, it's because Parliament passed such a law, whether it's, whether it's just getting a traffic fund, and so on and so forth. I really think that that's absolutely vital for one to do. But again, like I've said, it might not mean that you want to be a politician. But you, you, you can certainly leverage people, you can certainly give your, give your, give your inputs on, on, on what you want to have said. And, and I think it's much easier in this day and age to really have your say on things. We have situations where the Minister of Finance, the President of South Africa, the leaders of, I think, all parties in the country are on things like Twitter. So immediately now you can say, no, I think you should be doing this, I think your budget was wrong, I, I, I think you should add this and this. And we've seen in the city of China where public participation meetings are called, attendance is normally quite bad. 
to be honest. And I think maybe over time, you know, we can find ways to increase that. There is there is a ward councillor in the Kuruleni. His name is Malcolm Maifala. What he does now is he's actually starts it, and it might be because he's comparatively young. He started having public consultation meetings with his residents online on Facebook. Say what do what what do you think? What what issues should I be addressing? And maybe going into the into the future, we can leverage more useful ways, more practical ways, also that people are leading incredibly busy lives. So I've actually tried to make my speech a lot shorter than it was going to be, looking at how long things have dragged on from when I was due to speak at 1.20 as well. I think people might be getting a little bit hot and tired. But really, the message that I want to leave you with is that in getting involved in society in any way that you choose to, whether it be in government, in business, whether through NGOs, you have to do it in a way that's moral and that's ethical and that's just and is focused on uplifting other people. I think that's why we belong to organizations like Toastmasters, because it doesn't only teach you how to be the best person that you can be, but it's, it actually compels you through the structure of meetings, through the structure of organization, to give I would say positive criticism to others so that they can be the best that they can possibly be in life. We can, we, we can strengthen institutions, we can expose people, we can hold people to account. And I think with all of these things we have to be, to be fearless. And we have to create an environment that we would want our children and our children's children to live in and be proud of. Because that's essentially the work of every generation, is to make their, their nation, their area, a place that can be of value to future generations. One of one of the previous speakers also referenced Barack Obama. I don't know if you've heard this already today because I came in maybe at 20 past 12, but a, a quote of, of his that I think about possibly every week, he said, we cannot wait for some other time, for some other person, for change to come. We are the ones that we have been waiting for. I thank you. Thank you so much.